here today, and we have the future governor of New Hampshire, Ovid LaMontagne. Yeah. Ovid, 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 Ovid. Now, you don't need me speaking about Ovid's life, because he, he's made it perfectly clear he's a fourth generation New Hampshire native. So he'll tell you all about that today. But what I want to tell you about is my friend. My friend that's a true leader in business, a true leader in the nonprofit industry. He is a leader in the state of New Hampshire. Unlike his opponent, his opponent served with me in the New Hampshire Senate. She knows what it's about to raise the spending in the state of New yeah. Hampshire 24% in four years. Yeah. She raised 99 taxes and fees in four years. The reality was she left a deficit that when I got back there and chaired Senate Finance, there was $800 million. That's not what we want here in New Hampshire. We want a true leader. We want a leader that's going to say, I'm either going to veto a bill or I'm going to sign the bill. That's what you want here in New Hampshire. I'm going to introduce a great governor, a governor that knew how to reduce spending here in New Hampshire. And with this many Sununas in the audience, I'm not going to tell you who's the greatest. But the reality is, here today, Governor Steve Merrill. It's great to be here. I'm here because I know and believe in Ovid Lamontin. And I'm also here because I know Maggie Hassan. <laughs> you may remember, I ran against the queen of the income tax, Deborah Arne Arneson. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Maggie Hassan is a direct descendant of the queen. <laughs> when, when she first ran for office great. against Russ Prescott, she said yes. I endorse the income tax, and now she's running for governor, and she said, well, no, uh, now I'm going to take the no tax pledge. It's kind of like John Kerry, who was this way before he was that way. It doesn't sound like a no tax pledge to me, ladies and gentlemen. It sounds like a pledge of convenience. And as Chuck indicated, we don't need that. We don't need someone who has voted for 99 tax and fee increases only to find that the 100th would be a job-killing income tax. It was bad then when Arnie proposed it, and it's bad now. You heard Chuck indicate that Maggie has voted again and again, $800 million in spending over and over again. What Ovid Lamontagne understands is that job, jobs come from small businesses, and small businesses create a community. They create the backbone of the state. I came here today, I woke up in Washington, D.C., and I turned the TV on, and there was a woman lying on the sand, and the headline was, California goes belly up. <laughs> now it was 5 a.m., but I thought it was a story about tanning. So I turned up the sound, and it said, it was a play on words, obviously. It said, California is going bankrupt yep. because of taxes, spending, and debt. And thousands of small businesses are leaving California to go to Nevada, mm -hmm. to Texas, and to South Carolina. Yep. That can't happen in New Hampshire, and it won't happen under Governor Ovid Lamonte. Yeah. to run for office, and I am so proud that Ovid is willing to take the time, the energy, and the commitment to make sure that his daughters and my sons can stay in New Hampshire to work. This is a great state to live and work and raise a family, and it is going to be even better under the next governor. Ladies and gentlemen, Ovid Lamont. He shows us what a great state senator can be. And we to support him. 
And I don't know about you, but as a New Hampshire native, somebody who's lived in this Granite State for the last 26 years in business and all, when I hear the voice of Steve Merrill, it's like hearing the voice of Ronald Reagan. Isn't it great to hear Steve back out here? so powerful as truth. Hey, yes. Yes. Those right. are the words of Daniel Webster, a great Granite State statesman. Amen. The very words that appear on the masthead of the state's statewide paper, the Union Leader. And a few weeks ago, we heard something similar being uttered by a great national leader at the Republican National Convention when he said this, we've never been a country to shy away from the truth. History knows that we stand up when it counts. And it's the quality that defines our character and our significance in the world. I know the simple truth, and I'm not afraid to say it. Our ideas are right for America, and their ideas are have failed America in Washington and beyond. Those words were uttered by our special guest who's going to be with us in a few minutes, <laughs> Governor Chris Christie, America's True Color. Indeed, we're, our party and my prosperity agenda is based on truth. And the truth is, to the small businesses and large businesses of our state, we built these businesses, not governments. Yeah. Free enterprise creates jobs, not governments. Right. And the truth is, every tax increase, every fee hike, takes freedom and liberty and capital away from us. And it funds bigger government. And it chokes our children's future and our own. And the truth is, the other side believes that investments are not taxation, and that's a myth. And we're about truth, are we not? Yeah. We're about the truth. Now we believe that this great state of ours is at a crossroads, and it is. And the truth is, the people of New Hampshire are going to be making a choice this November 6th. They either want to go down the road that has been led under Maggie Hassan as majority leader of higher taxes, 99 of them, and fees, higher spending 24% during the time that she was the majority leader of the state senate, a, uh, an $800 million budget hole that Senator Morris had to fix with the legislature, and a Maggie Care approach that takes government and puts it in control of health care of our state, and that is not the direction we should be going in. free enterprise and getting government out of the way of job creation, at reforming our state government, at bringing zero-based budgeting to the equation, as Governor Christie did in New Jersey, of getting control of our system of delivery, of being pro-business in the approach we take, of being pro-freedom and choice when it comes to education and health care, of living and working for the people and not taking freedom and liberty away from them. This is our hour in New Hampshire, and we are the state that is going to save this country by making Barack Obama a one-term president. And we are going to be the state that saves this country by getting control of our own destiny, by making sure that New Hampshire is a better place for our children and our grandchildren than we found it. So in that spirit of can-do optimism, would you kindly give me a, help me give a warm New Hampshire welcome to America's truth teller, Governor Chris Christie of New Jersey.
here? Now you guys get this weather all the time, right? Yeah! yeah. Up here. This is great. Yeah, I'm so we happy to be here, and I'm so yeah. happy to be here uh, for Oven. Um, listen, I know what good, strong, conservative, Republican governance can do. Um, and what it can do here for New Hampshire is even greater than what it's done in New Jersey. See, in New Jersey, uh, we already did the Maggie Hassan experiment. <laughs> you already tried it, everybody. So let me give you a preview of what it looks like. Because it's not pretty. All right, for the eight years before I became governor, we raised taxes and fees on the people of New Jersey 115 times. Wow. Wow. In eight years. Just so you understand the scope of that, that's a tax or fee increase every 25 days for eight years. Every 25 days, government went into our citizens' pockets and took money out for the next harebrained scheme coming out of Trenton by some politician who thought they knew better, thought they knew better how to spend your money than you do. What happened in New Jersey because of that? Well, take the number of jobs in the private sector we had on January 1st, 2000, Compared to the number of jobs we had in the private sector on December 31st, 2009, we had less jobs in 2009 than we had in 2000. We literally had a jobless decade in New Jersey because of the taxes and the regulation and the debt that we piled up. Our spending went up an average of 16% a year. 16% a year during those periods of time. I mean, this is the crazed, liberal experiment brought to life. Now, you don't want that. And anybody like Maggie who's running against Ovid here, who starts like whispering about an income tax, you know what that means. <laughs> See, because the politicians who whisper about an income tax, they've already made up their mind. And here's what you gotta remember about New Jersey. 35 years ago, we didn't have an income tax in New Jersey. No income tax, like right here in New Hampshire. We had no income tax. And Governor Brendan Byrne, if you just give me a small income tax, just a little one, I will lower your property taxes. One of the people who had the highest property taxes in America back in 1977. So 35 years, we got. We still have the highest property taxes in America. And the income tax that started at 2% under Governor Byrne is now 9%. 9%. Here's, here's the key, everybody. You let a liberal politician in the door and give them permission to give you a new tax. They only know one direction for that tax to go, and that's up. Yeah. So, here's the challenge. The challenge for the next 43 days is that we have to make sure everybody in New Hampshire hears that message. His message is a clear, smart, concise one, and it's this. He wants to empower you. He wants the winners and losers to be decided in New Hampshire on a very simple formula. Your ingenuity, your integrity, and your work ethic. That's what you decide winners and losers in New Hampshire. Not the government. And you don't have to take my word for it because Ovid's had a career. An entire career both in the private sector and in public life that gives you the evidence that that's exactly who he is and what he stands for. And I'm just here to let you know what will happen if you go in the other direction. New Jersey is the example of what will happen. And as we try to dig out of that hole now, it's hard work, everybody. You don't want to get there. A 9% income tax, a 7% sales tax on top of it. You, you don't want to go there. It is a very difficult place to get out from under. And so New Hampshire has a great great foundation here, built by the great people of this state. And they don't need someone who's going to come in and tell them that government is the solution to their problem. It just isn't. And, and that's the best of democratic philosophy. And if you don't believe me that that's a democratic philosophy, let me remind you of something. A couple of weeks ago, the Democrats had their national convention in Charlotte, and as a sacrifice for my nation. I watched it. <laughs> I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. But I felt I owed it to my country. Three nights, I sat on my couch and turned that thing on. And I had my son Patrick, who's 12, had to bring me a big bottle of water because I had to remain hydrated. <laughs> 
tell you the truth, when I hear that much garbage, I'm going to get lightheaded. So I need to stay hydrated so I can stay awake and hear all of it. And I heard a lot of garbage coming out of Charlotte, North Carolina, but let me tell you the worst thing I heard. And this is the difference between Republican governance and Democratic governance. This is the difference between a New Hampshire with Ovid as the governor and Maggie as the governor. Here's what it is. Right before President Obama's speech on Thursday night, the Democratic National Convention said this. Government is the only thing we all belong to. Oh. Now, I want you to really take a minute and think about that. <coughs> See, because when you first hear it, it sounds kind of nice. <laughs> we all belong to something. Isn't that great? We all belong to something. Isn't that nice little more in your heart? <laughs> Let's say it one more time because I want you to really listen to it. <laughs> Government is the only thing we all belong to. Now, I don't know about all of you in New Hampshire. I suspect I know the answer. But my life hasn't been about that. And I don't think it's what most Americans' lives have been about. I think this. We don't belong to government. Government We're belongs to us. us. He has the Constitution. And you know, if we open that up and we read the first line, it doesn't say we the government, does it? No, it doesn't. It says we the people. We the people give certain authority and power to the government, not the other way around. And that's the difference between Republican governance and Democratic governance at its core. We as Republicans believe that we need to empower you, that we need to get government out of your way, that we need to just do the minimum we need to do to take care of those who can't take care of themselves, to give those folks a hand up when they've gotten into some difficult times, but then to just give them the opportunity for greatness. We don't guarantee anybody in America anything other than an opportunity for greatness. Yeah. That's what we guarantee them. The Democrats, the Democrats, both Maggie here in New Hampshire and the President of the United States, what they want is for government to make your decisions for you. They want to pick the winners and losers. They want to have America in their image. They want you to belong to the government. They want you and your lives to belong to them. No way. Now, there is no way we can permit that to happen, first and foremost, in New Hampshire. They're already doing it. Any state that's modeled is live free or die. <laughs> I gotta tell you the truth. I'm not even not to get ever elected so Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm never, ever, ever elected Democrat. I don't understand it. But I'm not gonna question that today. <laughs> Seen. They have seen in New Jersey what can happen when you have liberal, liberal government run amok, and even worse, they've seen what's happened in Washington, D.C., when you let liberal government run amok. And I'll tell you something. Here's something you'll never hear Ovid say. You never hear Ovid say, you can't change Concord from the inside. <laughs> into Concord to change it from the inside. From the inside. Well, first of all, I want to help the president. <laughs> to the extent the president's coming to New Hampshire, I'm sure he's coming back, right? And he can see this tape. I want to speak directly to the president. Mr. President, you live at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. You are Mr. Inside. If you can't change Washington from inside the White House. You know,
New Hampshire is the state of consequence. Just that much. No, you're good. <laughs> you all are going to play a key role, maybe they, the key role, in determining the next president of the United States. Yes. yes. Yeah. You did it in 2000. Yep. <clears throat> when New Hampshire was won by George W. Bush in 2000, you were the difference. Your electoral votes were the difference between George W. Bush being president and Al Gore being president. Whoa. That's consequence. Yeah. That's consequence. And today, in the same way, 43 days from now, you're a state of consequence in two ways. First, we got to elect Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan to save our country. Republican governors in America. 29 of the 50 Republican, the 50 governors of America are Republican. And you've heard of these Republican governors because of what we're doing. Right. Yeah. You've heard of people like Scott Walker in Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. Guess what? I want to be standing next to the 30th Republican governor in America. Yeah. Let's make over the 30th. Yeah. 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 I love the fact that Ovid has given me the title as America's truth teller. I love that. So I gotta tell you all the truth. I'm in a great mood today. I love coming to New Hampshire. I was in Utah over the weekend and Missouri. So coming to New Hampshire feels like I walked here. It's so I'm in a great mood. I didn't have a lot of time on an airplane. I landed in a beautiful state. The leaves are starting to turn. Just a little. The weather is gorgeous. The people are warm and welcoming, and I'm in a great mood. And we've got a great candidate to stand next to today to talk about the future of New Hampshire. But I want to warn you folks of something. Showing up at this rally today is great, and I appreciate it. And I know Ovid appreciates it, too. We appreciate your enthusiasm and your support. But if you think that this ends it for you, no. then you are sadly mistaken. No. Okay? 43 days to go, six weeks. Six weeks to uh. go, right? Now, here's what we need to do. What you need to do is I want you to all go home after you leave this rally and look at your calendars for the next six weeks. And I want you to figure out how many hours each one of these six weeks you're willing to devote to making New Hampshire a great state again. Yes. How many hours are you willing to devote to make sure that this man gets elected? Because you are going to make the difference. You're going to make the difference if you're willing to put a couple hours aside. Let's just say two hours every week for the next six weeks. That's 12 hours of phone calls you can make. 12 hours of door-to-door -door you can do. 12 hours of just sitting in your own home, going through your phone book, calling your friends and your relatives, your neighbors, your coworkers, your customers, your clients, the people you see at the football games on Friday night, the people you see on the soccer fields on Saturday, the people you see in the parking lot of church on Sunday, the folks that you see in the supermarket checkout line. <laughs> Nobody should be immune from seeing those open buttons. No one should doubt <laughs> where you are. See, you can be the difference maker by opening your mouth and telling them, I've met him, I've looked him in the eye, I've taken the measure of his character, and I'm with him, and I need you to be with him too. You see, because the most powerful thing in American politics today, more powerful than the 32nd ad, more powerful than a piece of mail in the mailbox, believe it or not, even more She's powerful a, than a warm, okay. charming, automated phone She's call from the governor of New Jersey. <laughs> Even more powerful than that is you talking to a friend who's not sure who to vote for and telling them, don't worry, trust me, I met this person, you can trust him. See, over the next six weeks, I'm imploring you, that's what you need to do. Now, I told Ovid I'm going to come back in October to make sure that we're doing this. Now, when I come back... We know who you are. Yeah. The people here have been given at least two hours a week between now and when I come back. Because if you are not, I need to tell you something. I'm going to be in a much worse mood. And for some of you who have seen some of my 
town hall interactions with some of my more difficult constituents. You know that sometimes that can be less than pleasant. Yeah. Don't make me come back to New Hampshire in a bad mood. Yeah. <laughs> Say to me, you won't believe it. These people are killing it. They're knocking it out of the park. Our phone calls are way up. Our door knocks are way up. We've got people who are rushing into campaign headquarters across New Hampshire because they want to make a difference for New Hampshire. They want to make the state a place that their children and grandchildren will want to live in and can afford to live in. So that, remember this image as I leave. Everybody feels the same way about this, no matter what state you live in. This is about will our children be able to raise their children mm -hmm. here where we grew up, right? And so in New Hampshire, for all of you who love this state and help to build it, what's gonna happen? If we don't make the change that needs to happen, if we don't elect over the governor and go in that course, then for all those Little League games and soccer tournaments, for all those Christmas concerts and spring plays, and for all those little birthday parties around the kitchen table, that as grandparents, you get to go to now because your children are raising their children right here in New Hampshire. If this is no longer a place where they can get a good paying job, if this is no longer a place where they can afford to buy a home, if this is no longer a place where there's a great education to help to mm. take their children to the next type, they're gonna leave. Yeah. They're gonna leave to go where that's available. And then you're gonna become air grandparents. And you won't make those Little League games or those soccer tournaments, those mm. Christmas concerts, those spring plays. And worse yet, you won't make those little birthday parties around the kitchen table, which is where the fabric of life is woven. Right, right. right. So, when you think about whether you can spare two hours a week for the next six weeks, <laughs> think about that. Because that investment in time you're making now will make a difference in whether New Hampshire is the same New Hampshire you grew up in, and an even greater one for your grandchildren, or whether it isn't. So I'm thrilled to be here today because I know when I advocate for that, that I'm standing next to a man who understands it, whose life has been about it, and who wants it as badly for your family as you want it yourself. Yes. Give him a chance to sit in the governor's chair, and I'll guarantee you one thing. Every day he is there, he will make you proud to have voted for him. Thank you all very much. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Well, first of all, I want to thank Governor Christie for coming to New Hampshire and being part of our all to know that there's a, an additional incentive for Governor Christie to come visit New Hampshire. Oh. Food. <laughs> Eddie Lamontang is a New Jersey native who now lives in New Hampshire. She wants to back up the governor of New Jersey. As a token of our appreciation, Governor, we want to add to the fabric of your life by presenting you a New Hampshire tie in the color in which New Hampshire will look on November 7th. That's right. Right. God bless you, God bless America, God bless the great state of New Hampshire. Thank you very much. Oh, my God.